What's up, folks? It's Jean-Claude. I'm back in front of the M3 today. What we're going to be doing and showing you in this video is the installation of the clear paint protection film on the hood. Now, if you've been watching our videos, you've likely seen that we are also installing satin paint protection film. If you were to look at the car, you're not going to be able to tell that we've got clear film as well as satin because the clear film is going to be going underneath the satin. It's going to be installed first on the full hood, full front fenders, front bumper, headlights, and down the rocker panels. And the reason I'm doing that is I want that added protection, uh, having that much more of a barrier, uh, that much more of a membrane for any kind of impacts to have to penetrate before they can get to the paint because I hate the idea of having to repaint any of this special order Daytona Violet. Not that it couldn't be done beautifully. I happen to know a body shop um, that does absolutely incredible work here of all places in Pork and Bean, Rockdale County, Georgia, where our shop is. But it's a matter of I would just prefer to keep it original. I think most car enthusiasts kind of feel the same, that uh, a little bit of... Uh, effort up front can save a lot of headache later and that's why we're going to be putting on two different layers of film you're not going to be able to tell when you're walking around the car because the satin's going to be on top of the glossy portions of film and uh and i haven't i don't believe i've shown anything about it but we actually are going to have uh we currently have and you will see if you ever see the car in person we have glossy film on the carbon fiber roof so we're going for a pretty unique look with you know kind of black over the middle with the front and rear windshields uh, it's primarily going to look black at a distance, and uh, I'm sorry, glossy, and then uh, the rest of the painted portion is going to have that satin look to it. Appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, checking out the videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do, feel free to share it. Leave any comments, uh, critiques. I mean, critiques are people always critique, so that's a guarantee. I don't have to offer that. Uh, otherwise, hope you guys enjoy the video. Feel free to subscribe if you really enjoy it, and uh, I'll see you guys on the other side of the video here in a little bit. Before we begin the actual installation of the film, you know, it's like a lot of things uh, in life and definitely with cars, the prep work plays such a monumental role in giving yourself the uh, opportunity for uh, success and getting the best results. Whether the car is new or it's been enjoyed, a uh, truism is when you're wrapping the film, you need to have pure paint that you're on. You don't want any kind of greasy buildups, oils, wax, coating, nothing. And the purpose is, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. When you wrap the film, you want it to stick. But one of the best ways to get film to stick and to get it, uh, the surface really clean is this stuff right here, adhesive remover, 3M specialty adhesive remover. And what I like to do is get a little bit of this onto a quality towel and then gently wipe down the edges. And it's prepping those edges to ensure that nothing is remaining. And when we wrap, that sucker is gonna stay sticking really good. A big part of uh, this project was the paint correction to get the paint dialed in and ignore some of the fingerprints and there's some dust on the car. But um, we, I really wanted the car to look not just protected, not just pretty okay, but I wanted this paint to look gorgeous. And when the film comes off uh, in the future, whether it's still in my care or uh, maybe somebody else has purchased it, I want this to be better than new. And currently, after all that we've done to it, it is absolutely far better than new where it is even right now. Um, with that said, I'm talking about the dust and smudges and all that stuff on the car. Uh, part of the prep is going to be soaking down the hood and essentially we want to flood off anything that would uh, get between the film and the paint so that the film looks, um, you know, again, we don't want want it to look like there's any trash underneath that film. So that's what we're about to do. We're going to flood this sucker. We've got the film laid out right here. We've got to float the film. 
and then uh, we'll pick back up installing the film on the car here in a little bit. What I really like to do is use C-clamps as an additional body. Um, what I'll do is I'll start, and um, you can just bring it on around here, Pablo, but I'll start by cutting off an edge, a useless edge of the film. I'll sh uh, just etch it, peel it off, and then what I can do is use my C-clamp here. And then I'll come over here. Well, try come in. I'm in no man's land here. There we go. All right, so now when I go to spray and lift, and I'm gonna use my partner here to help me with that, but it's like having two extra hands on this to uh, get the film lifted. We call it getting it floating. That means that there's slip solution under, underneath the film and on the paper, and then it gives us time to focus on prepping the hood because what we're really aiming for is uh, with our installations, we want as small, uh, and film installers can appreciate this definitely, but what you really want to have is as small a window of exposed uh, time to the elements. It doesn't matter how nice your, your space is, if you've got a clean room or not, uh, there's dust. You can't stop it. But what you can do is by getting that film floating, having it ready to go as soon as you go to put film on uh, or you've got that surface flushed away from any other debris, uh, what you've got is that really small window and that's going to give you the best opportunity to get the film on without leaving debris in between. Because once that debris gets in there, you can pluck it out, but it is much more difficult to get it out and you can end up with, uh, you know, unattractive lift lines and uh, anything else. You just don't want to deal with that. So we're going to next show you uh, lifting and getting that film floating. Installers, what we're doing here is we're knocking out the big air pockets. Um, when you've got an air pocket, it doesn't matter that you once wet the film, um, the air pocket is going to become a dry spot. So if you're fighting with uh, ugly spots in your installations and you're doing a uh, you're doing a, uh, a float prep like this. Make sure you're getting that, those bubbles out. Otherwise you're gonna have, and we're not talking about every bubble, but we are talking about uh, reasonably large bubbles because that film does dry out on those spots. Before you install paint protection film, uh, it's really good to kind of assess what you intend to do for the installation. Um, and if you have somebody that's assisting you, then you definitely want to spend a few minutes explaining, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to stretch it. We're going to work it this direction. Uh, and that way you don't run into any speed bumps that add any significant amount of time because again uh, not just the exposure time to the elements uh, that affects the debris 
but how long you spend installing film on a panel has an impact. The better you get, the faster you get, the better it looks. Don't do things that are gonna add time, uh, exposure time, nor installation time. Have all of that completely taken care of before you start that, uh, actually putting the film on the car. I like to, just hearing myself to, I like to feel with the slip on a panel before I install to see if I can pick up on any leftover adhesives, anything that's bonded, because you will very likely be able to feel that. And make sure you've removed rings, no watches. Uh, you don't want to be doing this with either one of those on. And that's good. So next up is, we basically need to install some film. So let's do that. How much overhang do you have off of the far side? Uh, about this much. Right, we're going to pull my way a little bit. There you go, right there. So, you can see we already have uh, a lot of slip on the floor here, and we've already we've also squeegeed a number of times. Uh, so at this point, we're going to squeegee it again. Uh, hey, Raul, would you mind grabbing the, the floor squeegee? Uh, because this is a very wet process and it's just gonna continue to dump fluid on the floor uh, the way I like to do it. Um, and uh, again, I don't like standing in five gallons of water. So see you guys in a minute here. Here's another tip for the new installer. What a lot of folks don't understand is the, um, some of the subtle nuances to installing film and being able to read film. Uh, in paint correction, um, I've, I've talked about this probably ad nauseum to people who don't like hearing this kind of stuff, but, you know, I talk about reading the paint and listening to it, and it really does tell you, if, if you look for certain uh, conditions, it will tell you what it likes and what it doesn't like. And paint protection film is the same way. It's going to tell you what it likes and what it doesn't like. But before we've even stretched the film... You can see we have a handful of fingers on the leading edge as well as the sides. Um, and as we're using our hands to remove these large bubbles, what we're doing is we're also asking the film to behave as far as it will. We're dispersing the fingers. So, like Pablo, come around here. So you can see it's a pretty even distribution of fingers going all the way around the car, or all the way around the hood, on the, uh, kind of like a U shape. I won't say all the way around. But what we're seeking to do is, uh, I could take all of these fingers and essentially put one huge finger right here. By just manipulating it towards the center, I could create one big finger down the middle. And then you could potentially just stretch that out. I don't like doing that. I would rather get these fingers manageable all the way around and then kind of massage it into place. You know, stretch it here, stretch it there, lock it in, and then you can do your squeegeeing. Um, let's, see let's see if I can find... Oh, and I'll show you one more thing. Come on in here, Pablo. A lot of people have a hard time with the... Uh, call it like hard tack points. So a hard tack point is anywhere there's a body line that film is sitting on top of and the longer it sits there the more likely, I'll let it ring out, it's okay, um, the more likely that film is to stick to that spot. So on an M3 and M4 this is a major hard tack line. A lot of people have a really hard time with this. You can already see that the films, the, the uh, slip solution 
is working itself away from this corner, starting about here, all the way through here, and then back to here. You see, it's got plenty of slip here. Oh, check this out. It's already started to tack through here. So it's important to be able to identify your hard tack lines because as you massage this film into place before you actually squeegee, by the time you're squeegeeing, it should be pretty much where it needs to be. Now you may have some minor fingers you can work out, but you shouldn't be having to do major stretch when you're putting that squeegee on the paint. All right, roll, roll. let's go on and uh, get in here and re-slip this thing now that we've got it better in position. Uh, let me start on this side first. Okay. And you can also see it's, if, you could, if the microphone could pick up on it, it's actually starting to stick through here. So this is a pretty regular process of, of lifting it, massaging it, lifting it, massaging it, putting slip in there. And then finally, you'll be at a point where you can look at it and know, man, it's ready to, to squeegee this film down. tack once you've got it stretched into place this is a hard tack line all the way down bring it on in Pablo so let's see I'd already lifted some of it see that see where it's hard tacking it's good to massage massage it's good to massage that out as best as you can before you start that final push to squeeze you that thing down you ideally don't have any hard pack lines. Even on the edge, you're going to have a hard tack line. But I will show you guys how uh, some hard tack lines are necessary and you work with them, not you don't fight against them. It's another method to break your tack line, get a lot of fluid and massage it back and forth over the spot. Push the fluid back in. There's some bubbles. Is. Just broke through that spot. Massage that film. Keep it floating. line there it free flows that's where it picks up you see you can watch it kind of dissipate as I go through this 
And definitely at a certain point, you move on. Because what I think I'm gonna do now should be, still should be fine. It was another hard tack spot just in the middle. It was probably where there was a bubble. But this technique right here goes a crazy long ways towards minimizing your um, hard tack lines, distortion, all that good stuff. Can I have the, uh, my squeegee, my marked, I believe it's marked, So I said there would be hard lines that we work with. This would be one that we work with because it's already been stretched, it's been pulled, it hasn't been touched. If you release that, you're gonna have distortion and it's gonna find its way further up on the hood. So you have to, you have to choose your battles. And you can see not a lick of distortion through here. A lot of people really struggle with that. Hey, can you turn the uh, AC on for me? Thanks, man. Getting a little toasty. No distortion through here either. And even if there was a marginal amount of distortion, it would definitely go away. It just kept, just kept massaging it. Now this step goes significantly faster because I'm not having to fight the I'm not having to fight the film to behave. And installers, when you come to a hard tack line, if you're not still massaging it, and even then you want to be very careful, you do not go perpendicular to a hard tack line. Did you guys notice how I, I came through here and I worked the tack line parallel? If you work against it, you're going to force something in. You're going to distort the film, the adhesive. Anybody that's installed, if you're not confident with this, this kind of stuff beats the crap out of your installs. It really can make you feel like, you know, you've otherwise done a great job. Now, I did say don't go perpendicular to a hard tack line, but I had already come through and knocked down this edge, this side. So I'm now coming, going perpendicular because I'm trying to build me a margin of where that water won't try to creep anywhere else. Once 
I get kind of to this kind of area, you're gonna find me pushing everything back down because I don't like taking a large gap and funneling it into a small area because that tends to, again, you're gonna distort that film. Have a little more fluid than I want to work with a smaller squeegee. So I'm gonna use my hands to remove some of that. And because I need to get on that side, I don't want that film getting crazy on me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack to this edge and then I'm gonna leave it. And of course, when, you, uh, when you're instructing people, everything takes far longer. And I would have preferred to uh, be mostly done with this hood by now, with the squeegeeing part. The longer it sits, the more likely it is that you're gonna have problems. making sure I don't have any hard tack film over here, nothing that would be a serious problem for me. I can inspect and I see that the hard tack line starts here. It's not bad. If I had this still filled with slip, I could definitely work that out, but I'm not going to I'm not going to push and slip back through there. I'd rather just go parallel with it. And I'm going to go back and where I squeegeed, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, I want to go ahead and create a new tack line. So that original tack line was through here, and I don't wanna leave any tack lines too long. A tack line uh, in this case is where we squeegee and we stop. Because where the film is pulling, it's now pulling right on a hard line versus on a, uh, a larger surface. Kind of think about it like a rubber band. Uh, what's gonna behave better, a, a skinny rubber band or a fat, short rubber band. And when you've got a hard tack line, whether it's here or it's where you squeegeed and stopped and then came back, essentially what you've done is you've created a spot where that film cannot stretch anymore. So when it goes to stretch, it distorts right on that line. And that's where a lot of that adhesive distortion comes from. So I've got a pretty hard tack line here. I don't like that. So I'm gonna massage that out. I'm not messing with that any further. Can I have the, uh, that's what I'm looking for. You know, I said I wasn't going to share a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm kind of just, you know, like, you know what? It doesn't really matter. We do what we do, and hopefully this will help somebody else. See, here's a hard tack line. Keep your eye on, uh, put the camera on that, Pablo. So watch this. You see that hard tack line right there? Let's break through it. So, all, 
all of these spots would have been distortion. It would have looked like trash. So break them up with my hand. This only works because I've been doing it as I go and I haven't just ignored sections. Boom, all broke through. There's our hard, hard tack line. You see the water's not coming out here. Look at all that fluid. I'm not gonna force it over that line. That would be probably the worst possible thing to do right now. But what I can do is shimmy it this way towards the center. And then watch this. Bleah. Yep. That's the, that's the film throwing up on us. So we can't get that all the way up in there, but what we can do is hand squeegee it. It's a hard tack line there. I don't want to see that. Boom, gone. Hard tack lines. These want to be a certain way. So I don't like that. Let me get in here. Massage those up. All right, the rest of this should go down relatively easily. Uh, I'm probably gonna soak back up these edges. I'm gonna load them, make sure I don't have any big bubbles. And here's another tip. When you get to your edges, don't go per completely perpendicular. Even though it's floating, you can see for an installer, you can see that's floating. Still don't go perpendicular because as you go, you're going to be pushing fluid out both sides of your squeegee. What you really want to do, let me get to back up a little bit, Pablo, that way. Uh, there you go. i got to have my light. Let me get this correct. You want to do is go out at, at an angle. You want to you want to rake it out, kind of like a or a snow plow it out. It's kind of what you're going for. It's the snow plow. The snow plow make you say wow. 
I'm a dad, man. I make those jokes. So again, I know this is a hard tackle line. I would be a fool to do this. I need to work with it at this point. With overlapping strokes, this is where I tacked two minutes ago. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go above that. You never start right at where you are, where you last squeezed. I'm gonna leave this floating. Double check, see if I've got any deal breaker type situations. Looks like we had some here. You have to be careful with this, because that one is done. There we Hard tack lines. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this to a stopping point right here. What is that? Looks like a nothing. There's a little finesse that needs to happen in these back corners. That's why I'm not messing with them at this point. Um, but up front here, let's see. What we want to do, this is why I left this floating, is there may need to be a little bit of stretch. I mean just a smidgen right there. So I've got a short, fat rubber band, what I was talking about before. A short area to stretch. So you have to have extra finesse when you're going to be working with uh, the wider the rubber band, so to speak, the more the finesse you need to have. And that's just about it. 